All right, recording, recording, we're good. Okay, welcome human to Etitsuka Tutorials. So before I start talking about that robot above my head, I just have three really quick things I want to say. One, I made a Facebook page for Etitsuka Tutorials. That's facebook.com slash Etitsuka. And I just post screenshots there. I'll probably post some other things there. Uh, yeah, if you like Facebook, that's the Facebook page for Etitsuka Tutorials. Uh, the next thing is I started a Vine, which I will be linking to my Twitter account. Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Vine. Uh, I'm probably going to post maybe some funny videos there. I know I'm not like the funniest person in the world and I'm really better at making video games than I am being funny. Uh, but I will probably also do other things. Like for example, I got this game working on Ouya and Android phone. Mostly Ouya though because I didn't do touchscreen controls yet. So it works really well on Ouya. So I'll probably make a short Vine video for that. So if that's something you're interested in and want to see more of, go ahead and subscribe to me on Vine or however Vine works, or you can just follow me on Twitter, it'll link there too. Uh, the last thing is I, I created a subreddit for ATSCA tutorials. I just love Reddit. I've been using Reddit so much. It's one of my favorite places on the internet now. So I thought that I would make a subreddit. There's really nothing there right now. There's just one post that says, this is the ATSCA tutorial subreddit. And it's just, it's like an empty subreddit right now. So, uh, if you have any ideas of things that could go on Reddit, or you want to start a discussion there, or you want to just subscribe to that subreddit just in case stuff starts happening on it in the future, yes, that is the subreddit. So, all three of those things will be linked in the description below. So, enough talking. Let's actually jump into this update and see the gameplay, because I know that's what you all clicked on this video for. Uh, so, anyways, um, actually, let me full screen it, because my face will be in the way otherwise. Okay, so as you can hear, there is music going, and that is from nosoapradio.us. That's pretty much where I get all my music. Um, yeah, that's a really great place. It's all royalty-free, uh, so that will be a great resource when the actual tutorials do come out. Um, so yes, here are the robots. They are not robot zombies. Um, I know they look a lot like the robot zombies. Um, and yes, uh, I chose robots for two reasons, and that's a little bit of the melee combat, which I'll talk about in a second. But I chose robots for two reasons. One, they're really easy to make. They're easy to animate, they're easy to model, they're easy to texture, they're easy to do voices for, uh, they're easy to do uh, concepts for different types of uh, enemy robots, like Let's say you just want different robots that look different, that have different behavior, so you can get different types of combat. Like, concept-wise, it's so much easier to come up with a robot, because you're just like, oh, it's a little robot, it does this, or this robot has a helicopter on him, and like, just stuff like that. So it's just uh, really easy to come up with new concepts for, and you can mix and match them around, and you can do cube art, and they still look like robots. Uh, so yeah, just I really like robots just like that. Oh, you also don't have to necessarily do a skinned mesh, uh, because they're all rigid, and made up of uh, multiple parts uh, so you don't necessarily need to do organic modeling or anything like that so yeah long story short robots are easy to make so I chose robots uh, the second reason it actually goes along with the storyline of the game and that will be revealed more in the future because I'm sort of making it up as I go but I kind of do have a good idea in my head of what the storyline is going to be I really should get a little bit more of it down on paper but anyways that's besides the point but the fact that they are robots are actually a metaphor which you will learn more about when you actually play the game or if I just uh, start talking about it more in future videos. So anyways, uh, let's talk about the combat. So the combat works. Uh, it, it works, uh, but it needs to be better. Um, I think it, it's okay. I'm kind of happy with it, but I'm, I want it to be better. I need to go back. The code's really sloppy. Uh, it's like in first draft mode right now. Um, and I really want to improve it and make it smoother. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that before I launch the Kickstarter. Um, but hopefully I can polish it up a little bit more than what it is right now. Um, but yeah. Oh, one other thing about the robots is it's probably hard to see in the video, but they're the treads on their tank tire thingies are actually moving with the speed of the robot. I'm probably going to have to update that a little bit more so that you can see it better, because at certain frame rates, it's hard to see, and it looks like it's just standing still. Um, but, yes. Uh, so that's just a UV map effect, and just messing with tiling textures and multiple materials. Uh, so, yeah. So that was something I was, thought was kind of cool a little bit. 
Um, but anyways, uh, the last thing I want to show you about the robots is their pathfinding. Uh, yes, the robots actually do have pathfinding. To show you, I will climb up here and I will look back over here just so you can see that the robot should follow me up here. That was a strange little glitch, but it's still working. Um, here he comes, here he comes, and he found me, and he hit me. As you can see, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but they uh, claw the player, and the player like flies back and blinks red. Uh, there's no actual health yet. The only thing that I created so far was just the effect when you get hurt. So, yeah, I really like that effect. Um, but yes, you might be wondering, how did you get such good pathfinding in your game? I don't think you're capable of that, Etiski. I don't think that either, because you all saw the tutorials that I made on how to create your own AI from scratch. I mean, like, code everything, which was, like, a ten-part series. No, maybe it was, like, five parts. I don't know, but there was a lot of parts to make the AI, and it was a lot of code, and it was really complicated, and that was, like, the best I could do, at least at the time, and I'm pretty happy that I was able to make a tutorial series about it, but we all know that that AI was super, super glitchy, and was it was super, super glitchy. That's really the only thing to say, and it wasn't streamlined or easy to make or anything like that. It actually took a lot of effort to uh, get working in your level, um, and it wasn't very flexible, but anyways, that's besides the point. So this is the reason why the AI is so good now, and that is Rain. Uh, so don't get that confused with Rain Indie. Rain Indie is what is currently available, and it Rain is the new product from Rival Theory. It's just called Rain. It's not Rain 1. It's not Rain Indie. It's just Rain. Uh, so if you go to RivalTheory.com, I think only Rain Indie is available right now, but Rain, it should be launching very, very soon. Actually, it might have already launched. I can't remember what the date was, but it is launching very, very soon, and Rain is the new product, and it takes all the best parts of Rain Indie, and it makes it even better. Uh, I really love it. I've been using it for just a little while. I've been a part of the beta. Uh, I've been working closely and talking closely with uh, the Rival Theory company. Uh, those are super awesome people. Um, if you remember, I actually did an interview with the CEO of Rain uh, what not rain of rain indie at the time in the company is rival theory uh, and i talked with uh william klein who is basically an ai expert um so that was a really cool interview i'll also link that in the description below but anyways rival theory is a really cool company rain is a really awesome product i i love it. it it's it's i haven't used unity pro's ai pathfinding solution but i assume that rain is just simply better. It's it's hard to say it's not uh, because it does nav mesh, uh, generates the nav meshes really, really well. Uh, it has great pathfinding. Uh, it's really, really fast. I noticed absolutely no performance overhead. It just seems to run exactly the same with or without rain. So great performance. It works on mobile. I tested it on a phone. I tested it on Ouya. So great performance. Uh, it's got behavior trees, which are really cool. And it's just it's just really easy to integrate into the game, uh, and it's just a really simple product to use, yet it's a really powerful product to use. So that will be officially a part of the new tutorial series, is that I'm going to show how to use Rain. Uh, and that is not going to interfere at all with the fact that I want all of the software and tools used in this tutorial series to be free, because Rain is free. Rain Indie is free, Rain Indie is the current uh, product that's out there, and Rain is going to continue that trend and I believe it is just straight up going to be free I don't know how the company does that like it, it just boggles my mind that they have such a great product and just give it away for free it's just it's the coolest thing in the world um but yes, uh, oh, another thing I love about Rain and the fact that it'll really fit in with this tutorial series is the fact that Rain isn't necessarily just dragging and dropping in something that somebody else made. Like to some degree, it is like that, but it also still allows for you to do a lot of creative things. It allows you tons and tons of control over what you're doing, and uh, especially within the behavior trees, you can do a lot of customization and really create some cool things in those behavior trees where you are creating something. It's just giving you the tools to create something. So it's not necessarily just drag and dropping a uh, copy and pasted version of somebody else's stuff. So that is another reason why Rain is going to fit in great with this tutorial series. Um, but also I am going to still try to keep the tutorial series flexible. Uh, so if you only want to use Unity and that's the only tool you want to use, I will be teaching some really simple AI stuff, like really 
like like pattern AI and like retro AI. Like think back to like Mario AI, like stuff like that, where they just they really just follow patterns. They might like jump out at you if you come within a certain distance. Um, just really simple stuff like that. Maybe they just follow like a pattern or something. They just I don't know, really really simple like that. Maybe they just move back and forth. Just uh, really really simple AI. So I will teach the uh, both best of both worlds of making your own AI from scratch and using super super awesome AI that is free and that is Rain. So you can go to RivalTheory.com if you want more information on Rain and link in the description below to that. Uh, so yes, um, yes. Uh, let's show the. Um, rough draft basically of actually I gotta delete a few things actually let me get rid of that let me get rid of that let me get rid of all of that, those uh, let me get rid of most of these like let's select all of these and let's hold shift right shift yeah like that and let's do that perfect okay we're good we're ready so this is kind of a rough draft school that I'm still working on it's not finished yet and even when it is finished it's not going to look as good as the final product because this is a rough draft that I'm just creating for the demo um, so this entire school will basically be like one level I don't know how long it'll be I'm hoping 10 minutes um, Probably 10 minutes is probably going to be a good time. So there's going to be a little bit of combat. There's going to be a lot of platforming. Um, there might be a little bit of story in there. I haven't decided that yet. And really that comes down to how much time I'm going to have. I don't know if I'll have time to uh, do very many story elements in this demo. Because I really want to get this Kickstarter launched fairly soon. Uh, but anyways, there is the guy there. And why don't I actually go ahead and just uh, hit play so that you can see what is going on. Um, so yes, this is just like the outside of the school. I just have some really simple platforming elements in here, uh, but I'm definitely going to add more. I'm probably going to change the setting to make it look a little bit more like the other scene where it was like dark and spooky. Um, probably going to change it a little bit and make it look a little bit more like that. Uh, but why don't I go ahead and jump down here and I'll show you the inside of the school. Right now it's just completely empty. I got some robots in there that I just threw in there as a test. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, so yeah, hopefully there should be a demo available soon, which will be available uh, for bloggers and journalists and Let's Players and anything similar to that. And then I'm also going to make that one of the, uh, probably the lowest reward tier uh, on the Kickstarter, but that's not finalized yet. I gotta work out the details about that. And of course, all of the details about that will be available when I actually launch the Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, I think that is pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so yeah, once again, uh, Facebook, Vine, Reddit, all the links in the description below. I will, in the near future, I'll do a Vine showing that this game works on Ouya because there's really not much to show about that. I mean, maybe there's a little bit. All I really had to do was just change the shader settings to mobile, and it worked great. I was getting a great frame rate. Like, um, actually, let me just go back, and I will uh, re-enable all of these schools because I just copy and pasted the same school a bunch of times. So as you can see, all of this, I had all of these. Actually, I think I had more. I th yeah, I think I had a scene with more schools than this. Um, or maybe it was this amount. I can't remember. But anyways, Ouya just destroyed this. It worked so well. It was getting like, I can't remember. It was, it was hard to see the frame rate, but on average, like 45, 50 frames per second, like with this number of game objects in the scene, uh, and like I'm pretty sure all the texture resolutions were still full because I forgot to scale them down. Um, but yeah, like in the end, I'm going to create actual models and do it performance optimized the way you're supposed to, but. I mean, that really didn't seem like much of a problem for the Ouya. I mean, it didn't it didn't look good because there was like some weird clipping like in the far distance because I modeled everything very lazy. Um, so that's going to need to change in the final version and that won't be a problem in the final version. Uh, but anyways, I'm just kind of rambling. But anyways, the Ouya version ported very easily and worked really good and had good performance. And I'm going to post a short video of it on Vine sometime in the near future. <clears throat> oh, wow, my voice is getting dry. So I guess that means that this is the end of the video. So thank you for watching, and until my next episode, I will see you later, and keep making games.